Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining Quigley House's um, University this month. This month we're talking about cyber safety and safety planning. Um, I am Melissa Jordan. I am the Community Relations Coordinator here at Quigley House. So I am in charge of our prevention education, um, our volunteers and our social media. And then with me today, I have Detective Ellis from Clay County Sheriff, if you wanna say hello. Hello everyone. Um, so we're going to get into today we have, you know, we're talking about cyber safety um, and safety planning. We know that safety planning does not only consist of keeping you physically safe, but also online. So we'll discuss strategies to keep yourself safe in any situation. Um, and at the end, we'll provide resources as well. So safety planning in general. Um, we're going to talk about our physical safety. So some of these things are specifically related to domestic violence. However, this can be useful in if there is a burglary or something or even a natural disaster. Some of these things are good to keep in place whenever you are faced with any sort of circumstance where you need to get out of your home quickly. Um, so if there is an altercation that happens in your home, try to move to a room or area that has access to an exit. Don't trap yourself in a bathroom, kitchen, garage, or anywhere where there's weapons or that you can't get out quickly. Um, and it's important to practice how to get out of your home safely. Um, if your primary exits are blocked, have a backup exit, such as a window in a bedroom or a side door or something like that. Um, have a bag packed and ready to go. So this could have a change of clothes, a couple snacks, waters, um, extra battery packs, things like that. And this is good for a natural disaster as well, such as a hurricane or something like that. Um, and if there is, you know, suspected violence that's happening at your home, or you live with somebody who is prone to um, aggressive altercations, identify a neighbor or somebody that you can tell about that potential violence um, and ask if they hear something to have them automatically call the police. Um, you can devise a code word that can be used with your children, family, neighbors. Um, for example, if you never talk about pineapples and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I really want a pineapple pizza. Your friend knows, okay, you're in danger. I need to call the police. Um, you know, make a plan with you and your children how, where to go if you have to leave the home. Um, do, 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 do. And that includes in a natural disaster or something, have an evacuation destination. Um, and if you are in a domestic violence or dating violence relationship, um, use your own instincts and judgment. If this person um, has some volatility and you know that, okay, if I give them what they want right this second, I can potentially pacify them until I can get away safely. You know that person better than we know that person. So we can only help you so much when it comes to safety planning um, on how to get away from them and keep yourself safe. Um, so here's a couple little back end things about safety planning. So if you do need to escape a abusive relationship, you can open a bank account in your name in order to establish or increase independence if you don't already have one. Um, or you can even open an account at a different bank and have your um, some money set aside in there. Um, always make important copies of important documents. Um, so this is good, obviously, if there's a natural disaster, if there's burglary, anything, you have those, docu those documents backed up, such as your ID, social security card, birth certificates, things like that. And you can see if somebody you trust can keep them at their house, so that way you have them as a backup at a different location. Um, know how to contact your local domestic violence shelter or your um, local police. So our information, Clay County Sheriff's Office and Quigley House's information is at the end of the pattern for it so that way you can have it. Um, and as you move, as you grow, as you add new additions to your family, things like that, revise your safety plan as needed. Um, so if you have a pet, determine where your pet would go. If for some reason they can't go to your safe evacuation place, if there's somebody who can take your pet. Um, if you're in an abusive relationship and your partner leaves, whether that's by court order or 
there's some sort of separation or something, if you're able to change the locks on your doors, um, make sure your windows are secure. If you live in an apartment complex, you need to have this cleared by your landlord and stuff like that. And they might even help you to change the locks. Um, safety plan with your kids for when you're not with them. And this could be at an event. Um, this could be at school. If you are separated from the partner and there's a court order in place, you know, inform your children's school, daycare, whoever, about who has permission to pick up your kids. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. Um, if you're concerned about somebody coming to your work um, and causing a scene or potentially causing you harm, you know, determine who you want to tell at your workplace, whether that's a supervisor or a coworker, so that way you can potentially help to um, screen your calls or um, if they need to provide a picture to security of your estranged partner. Um, so that way, if they know this person is showing up, they're not supposed to be there so they can call the authorities. Um, if you work late, make sure that you have somebody with you to potentially walk you to your car or the bus. Um, and if you have a set way home and you have a very specific schedule, maybe change up how you go home, which direction you go. Um, so that way, if somebody is following you, it's a little bit easier to potentially lose them. Um, do, do, do. If there are children involved and there's an estranged parent, whether that's um, there's a court order that says that they can't see each other or there is specific visitation guidelines and you're concerned, you can manage any exchange of the children um, in public places. Um, you can decide if there will be monitored visits by who, where, um, teach children how to get out of the home safely. So you can turn this into a game um, I always like to tell a little story when I'm telling people about safety planning, because when I was a kid, I was really into being a spy. So I would have turned that game into like, okay, who can be the sneakiest, quickest little spy that can get out of this house without being noticed? Um, and tell the kids, you know, what, if there's a neighbor they can go to or a family member they can call. So that way they can let them know of the situation and get to safety. Um, and you can keep a quick list of emergency responders, such as firefighters, police, or family members near a telephone or something, or near um, a generalized location in your house, so that way kids can get in touch with emergency as they go. Um, so I know I just threw a lot of information. Um, and Obviously, if you want to stop and read just like every single word, you can pause the video and see that. And I just wanted to touch base with Detective Ellis, if there's anything he can think of when it comes to like physical safety planning, whether that's out in public or at home um, that maybe I didn't cover. Um, Alyssa, so first right out the uh, gate, I appreciate you uh, inviting the Sheriff's Office to participate in this. Um, uh, I love that Quigley House is doing this. I've, um, I appreciate, I think this is important that this is something that gets pushed out to everyone. Um, hopefully this gets out to a, a, a wide array of people and they share it with people and so on. Um, I think you hit on a lot of the very, very key points and um, just to reiterate those things again. And, and if you need law enforcement, we're here to help, call us. Um, don't think that someone's bothering us or if you think that something's not right or something doesn't feel right, we often hear people say that, well, you know, I saw something before, but I didn't want to call and bother you. Um, it's our job. You know, we're here to uh, provide a service um, and always be aware of your surroundings, even if you're in a place that you feel safe. Unfortunately, if someone's going to try to victimize you, um, even if it, that's in a police station parking lot, it's the same thing that we talk with new officers that even though you're at our police station doesn't mean that something can't happen in the parking lot. Um, and on the other prong of that, um, you mentioned a safe place for people to meet. A lot of law enforcement agencies, including the Clay County Sheriff's Office, and I know the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office as well, encourages people to do uh, custody exchanges or meetings or things that need to take place in our parking lots. Um, this is a public place. There's police officers going in and out. Um, it is a safe place. Oftentimes, Times there's video surveillance recordings. So we encourage people to utilize our facility for things that they need. Um, and as far as with the children, also have those conversations with your children that the police are here to help as well. 
Um, kind of a pet peeve of mine. I won't get on a soapbox for too long, but you know, parents or sometimes other people jokingly tell children, hey, if you don't behave, that police officer is going to arrest you. Um, I know that said jokingly, we all laugh about it. Um, but, you know, I try to always tell little kids like, hey, we're not going to do that. We're here to help you so that if they have to get out of a home or they are somewhere or something happens in public or somewhere where they don't feel safe, um, that they feel comfortable for going up to a policeman, even if they are somewhere that they shouldn't be or even if they did tell mom something that they shouldn't have, that the police are not just there to arrest them, that we are there to help them um, and to work with them and, and, and to try to make sure that they're safe. Um, but that's all I have to add if you don't have any questions regarding that. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, all right, so now we're going to get into more of Detective Ellis's wheelhouse, which is cyber safety. Um, and we'll have some questions for him at the end too that he's going to answer for us. But here are some just generalized safety tips about being online. So always try to create strong passwords. Um, you know, throw in some symbols, some numbers, like a lowercase, uppercase. So that way it's the most difficult to guess as possible. Um, and make sure you keep track of those, you know, either that's a lockdown password manager or a physical copy of those, whatever um, that's in a safe place. Um, turn off your location services, especially if you feel like somebody is monitoring where you are um, or make sure that, you know, your location is just sharing on your social media apps like Facebook or, um, Snapchat. Snapchat is a, a big one that I've seen. Like if you don't realize your snap map is on, it shows exactly where you are. Um, and you can zoom all the way in so you can see the street, the, the by street, everything. Um, so also a lot of people don't realize that their photos are geotagged automatically, um, especially if you don't turn that off um, on your phone. And that can be located in your settings as well. You can turn off the geotagging on all your pictures. Um, you can turn on your privacy settings on social media, whether that's creating a private account so people have to request to follow you, um, or it kind of, um, it prevents certain social media accounts from gathering um, an additional data. Um, always try to think before you post, you know, avoid posting um, personal sensitive information online. So like, for example, like a 15 year old, super excited. They just got their learner's permit. So they take a picture and they post the whole thing on there. Um, <laughs> so that way everybody knows exactly when you got your learner's permit, where you live, how old you are, all your information. Um, so obviously if you do want to share that you got your driver's license or whatever, you don't have to share the picture of the whole thing. Or if you do at least cover the sensitive information. <laughs> um, Never, obviously never give out your social security number or anything like that online either. Um, turn off your webcam. Sometimes webcams stay on after use. Um, so if you have one that's like built into your laptop or something, you can always take a sticker or something and cover that if you're concerned. Um, or if you have a physical webcam, you can disconnect it after use. Um, and a big thing is only friend people you know online. Um, so there's always those random pages on like Facebook or something that are trying to add you and they're some random person from like a different country or something that's trying to get your personal information. Um, so just make sure if you don't know the person, don't add them. Or if you have mutual friends, be like, hey, do you actually know this person? Or it might have just been one of those weird ads as well for them. So um, and if you see duplicate pages, like for a per person who is supposed to be your friend or family member, they're trying to add you, just go ahead and send a text or message over to the actual person and be like, hey, did you create a new Facebook account? Because if they didn't, now they're aware that their per profile is being duplicated and they can warn everybody, hey, not to add my second page because that's not me. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to at least those tips, um, Detective Ellis? Um, I think that you hit on all the key points, um, and I'll probably say this more than once, but the uh, saying, especially with children and even with adults, don't talk to strangers, that also applies online. Um, don't click on links, don't accept friend requests from people you don't know, uh, be careful on some certain ads and things that are posted on commenting, and then when someone shares a link or a video or a file, clicking on that, the same thing goes also for emails. 
Um, and anything on the phone, if you don't know it, you don't trust it, you don't feel right about it, or you, there's something that tells you that it's wrong or it's too good to be true, it probably is and don't click on it. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay. So now we're gonna get into some questions that were submitted um, about cyber safety in general. So um, we'll start with number one. What app do you believe is like a top safety concern for like youth, especially? Um, I will give a general answer. And, and the reason why I give this answer um, and I'll explain is every app. Okay. Um, we have worked cases uh, from every application, from Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Kick, um, Whisper. If it is an online application where the ability for someone to communicate with you and specifically a child exists, the probability that there's an offender on there or someone that is looking to exploit you or your child or both um, exists always. If your children are on an application where adults or people can go, um, there's a chance that, that someone's on the other end of that device that has nefarious intentions that are looking to do bad things. And it also is not just adult applications. You know, I tell people that um, sexual offenders do not go to adult sites, adult websites. They don't go to, um, you know, gun forums to talk to, you know, grown men, they're going places where children congregate and where children go. And that is every app, uh, Roblox, Minecraft, um, any of the applications where kids go, that's where they go because they know that there are children there. So be mindful that any app that has the ability to communicate, there's the potential. There obviously are the big tech apps, your Facebook, your Snapchat, um, your Instagram that we do find those cases on. And that's because there's a lot of users, but unfortunately children go down those rabbit holes. They click things, people talk, they get links shared with them and they click that stuff. And the next thing you know, they're on an application that um, isn't maybe known to parents or parents think, so oh, it's uh, it's Roblox or it's a game that every other child is on. The potential exists. And I can tell you that we have worked cases where children have been exploited on every one of those applications. And you reminded me of something as well, like um, online gaming as well. Like if you don't know who your child is talking to when they're on their PlayStation or Xbox or PC gaming or like communicating online with other people, make sure that they're not giving out their personal information on there or adding people. Yes, you can talk in like a, a team setting where it's just generalized, but don't add anybody you don't know on a gaming system, especially at, like on PlayStation, you can do close friends where they can see all of your information. Um, just make sure that you know who's on your kids' close friends list on your consoles and stuff like that. Um, okay, so um, what is like the number one thing that parents or guardians can do to prevent any issues online with their kids? Get involved and have the real world conversation with your children. Um, for years, parents have told, you know, our parents, parents and grandparents have told people back to the don't talk to strangers, you know, watch out for people. You know, we used to have to worry about a stranger and the um, cliche minivan pulling up at a park trying to lure kids into a van or pulling up to them. That stuff we find happens far less frequently because of the Internet. The playground for children to get exploited is now the Internet. So having those real conversations, the same conversations that we tell children if they were to find a loaded gun or a gun somewhere or they were to come across alcohol or drugs or someone were to bully them or there is an issue at school or someone makes them feel uncomfortable or inappropriately touches them. We always have those conversations about interactions in person. We have to have those same conversations with online safety. We have to have the same conversations to tell children that if someone says something that makes you feel uncomfortable or makes a comment about you or your body or something that you need to tell me or a trusted adult the same way you would if it happens in person. So for parents to be involved, for parents to also do audits of their children's devices, um, it might, might seem intrusive to the child or to the young adult, but if you explain to them, hey, I want to make sure that no one has got in your phone or hacked your phone or sent you something 
And a lot of it gears on the maturity level of the child. Um, the internet is extremely mature place. And sometimes smartphones are too smart for kids and kids aren't smart enough for smartphones. And also for parents to educate themselves on technology, there's a bunch of different resources out there that some of which we'll go over in the end. Um, but even as simple as Googling things, watching YouTube videos, um, learning as a parent to take those steps. So having real world conversations, um, explaining to children to not talk to strangers, it applies online and to do audits and to know what their children are doing behind their phone. Um, and not that a phone is just something that they do behind closed doors, that it's out in the open, especially with young children um, and having those conversations. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, so what would be a proper way to handle like a cyber threat or if somebody thinks that somebody's like catfishing them, whether that's in a relationship way or just like, oh, my friend online says that they're this person, but I don't think they are. Um, I think that it, you know, it goes back to, I'll say it again, don't talk to strangers. If you meet someone that you don't have a good feeling about or you don't think is appropriate, just remember it's okay to cut that person off. It's okay to block that person. It's okay to move on. Um, we shouldn't settle for talking to strangers. We shouldn't communicate with people that we don't know when we have an uneasy feeling. Um, if you believe that someone is catfishing you, I would, the first step I would do would be to block it. Um, to not communicate with that person. And again, not share any type of personal information. Um, people can be anybody that they want to be on the internet. Sometimes people can even be good at it. They create profiles, they create fake pictures, they have friends that they've also catfished that if you message them trying to vet or, or, or follow up that they're that person, it still doesn't mean that they are. People go to extensive links to do things and could be anybody they want behind a phone or you know on the, on the internet. Um, if you think that someone is saying something inappropriate or cyberbullying someone, uh, the first step is to, again, to cease that contact, block that person, make sure that your social media stuff is private and that there's settings. And again, you can simply Google how to do my Facebook settings, how to do my Instagram settings, and there are literally videos and tutorials to walk you through it. Um, but report it to those tech companies. Facebook has a way to report profiles the same way that Snapchat does. If you think that someone's doing something inappropriate and allow those tech companies to review it. If it's something that you believe is a violation of the law or something that law enforcement should get involved in, contact us, let us investigate it, let us look into it and let us take it on a case by case basis to try to help you. Thank you so much. Um, let's Okay, just a couple more questions that were submitted. So what is something, I know you've already touched on this, and we both kind of touched on this a little, but what is something you should absolutely not share ever on social media? Anything that you do not want getting out to everyone for the rest of eternity. And the reason why I say that is once you share something on the internet, a picture of yourself, we can never, nor can technology ever say that that picture is nowhere else. Once it's shared one time or sent to one person that you don't know, that picture potentially becomes an archive on the internet forever. Um, and just so that you know and that people know, um, once you're on these websites, once you're on these applications, Facebook, Instagram, all of them, you do not have a certain expectation of privacy, which means that if any of those tech companies decided that they wanted to use your photographs or someone I were to go on your Facebook profile and take your photographs and share them or put them on my page, as long as I don't see anything threatening or any violations of state laws, people are allowed to do that. So if you put it on the internet, be prepared that if someone wants to use your photo or they wanna make your personal picture of your children, their background photo, that is a not against the law which is why it's important to not talk to strangers, why it's important to not accept people that you don't know, make sure that your social media is locked down. And at the end of the day, if you're not comfortable with your business or your stuff being put out for anyone and everyone to see at any time, don't share it. Okay. Um, so what's something that you could specifically, what, what is some advice that you could give specifically to youth regarding a presence online? 
Uh, the same things that kind of would apply to your parents. Um, and I'll say it again for probably the fifth time. Don't talk to strangers. If you do that right out the gate, you're going to eliminate the majority of, of bad interactions of illegal stuff that can happen. Um, be mindful that the things that you do behind a phone or a computer, even though it might not be in person, can still be a crime. Um, if you make a written threat, you know, the state statute, um, I, don't, I don't make the laws or write them. If I threaten you in person to assault you, beat you up, I've committed a misdemeanor offense. Um, still serious, but it's a misdemeanor, so it's a lesser crime. If I write or I message a threat to do harm, it becomes a felony. If you memorialize certain things on the internet that are illegal activity, it can be a felony as well. So be mindful that the things that you're doing behind a phone or a computer um, do have real consequences. And I know that children, and I'll go ahead and put this out there to go ahead and debunk the rumor that Snapchat or uh, Whisper or things that you do on the internet just go away or we can't track it. That is completely not true. In fact, couldn't be anything further from the truth that we are able through technology and through practices that we have in investigations to track things right back to the source and to figure out who sent something, e even specific down to the specific phone or device. And in my unit, we also work uh, cyber tips from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NICMIC. And NICMIC receives reports from electronic service providers, which are these big tech companies, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. And if they see something that they deem to be illegal or child exploitive, they report it to law enforcement and provide us all the information um, back to that. You don't have that expectation of privacy on a service that someone else owns, like, like these social media applications. So you're putting your stuff on there. People are monitoring it. And you might do it a thousand times and never become an issue, but it's that one time that someone sees it and reports it that we then get involved. Um, so just be mindful of what you're doing and that there are real consequences um, and to understand that being nice and not talking to people that you don't know applies not only in person, but behind a phone. Okay, thank you for that. Um... What, and the last question, what improvements or changes have you seen in cyber safety as technology has advanced? Um, so the one big thing, I've, I've been working child exploitation cases for uh, almost 11 years now, and specifically dealing with a lot of internet crimes against children. Um, even as recently as several years ago, we weren't having these conversations. We weren't doing these things. We weren't doing community outreaches. We weren't talking about it. We, you know, we'd always talked about drinking and driving and gun safety and domestic violence, but we always seemed to leave out that, that, that elephant in the room that we knew was causing problems, the internet, social media, online child exploitation, cyber stalking, cyber sexual harassment. And we've seen not only communities talking about it, services coming up with it, and law enforcement and these tech companies improving the ways that we uh, scour the internet to make sure that children and, and adults are safe in what they're doing and giving the ability, for example, through NCMEC or through websites to report crimes. Um, oftentimes, maybe when people wouldn't feel comfortable calling law enforcement or they're not able to, that there's a way through technology to report things. Okay. And what would you like to see happen, like when it comes to cyber safety and stuff like that? Um, for every parent and for everyone to realize that no matter how good their child is or how well behaved they are, that it can happen to them and that they can be a victim. If we don't take steps to monitor, to have conversations, to educate children, to educate ourselves, educate yourself as a parent and as an adult, that even though you might think that it's behind a phone or behind the internet, or it won't happen to you, or my kid's a good kid, good kids make mistakes. But that's why it's important to have the conversations, to get in front of it. And if they do make mistakes, that they're comfortable enough to come tell a tr trusted adult that something happened that maybe I shouldn't have done, but before it compounds and it becomes worse and worse and someone exploits them, we've seen sometimes children and even young, young adults get victimized by a one-time incident on the internet 
and they don't tell someone because they're afraid and it continues. They continue to get extorted. They continue to send inappropriate things for years. And sometimes it leads to things such as as drastic as suicide, depression. So we want to make sure that we're having those conversations. We're educating. And at the end of the day, if your child and your juvenile is not mature enough and you know that to handle the Internet, then we need to take steps to protect them. It's the same way that we wouldn't let someone that's a 12, you know, we wouldn't let a 12 year old drive a car because they're not mature enough and it's illegal and they don't have a license. It's the same thing should apply to the internet that if they're not ready, they're not ready. And it's okay. It's, you know, it's okay to have those conversations and, and to um, eliminate some things for their own protection. All right. Thank you so much for answering all those questions and being so, um, you know, open with, you know, saying what needs to happen and all that. It's really great. And I agree with you. Having these conversations is really, really beneficial for not only us as service providers to communicate with each other on how to help people better, but also people to see kind of what we want people to know, like, okay, these are the things that are actually happening. These are the things that we're seeing and we want you guys to be aware so that way we can potentially prevent any future stuff from going on. Um, so here we have some resources. Obviously, if you're in an emergency situation, call 911. That should be your first call. And if it is a domestic violence or sexual assault, after you call 911, you can give us a call here at Quickly House. Um, we have our domestic dual domestic violence and sexual assault center, and we have all sorts of services. And we also have a shelter and forensic exams. Um, that is our 24-hour crisis helpline number. Um, and you can get more information about our services, um, safety planning, resources, all that stuff at our website. And then we have the Clay County Sheriff's Office. We have their non-emergency number. Um, and then we also have the Clay Sheriff um, website. Um, they also have resources and information on there. Um, and then we have a couple of other resources. So we have our um, the ICE human trafficking webpage that kind of goes over what to look for when it comes to human trafficking. Um, we have our stalking resource center from the victims of crime. So if you feel like you're being stalked or you feel like there's a situation where you don't know what's going on, but you're a little weary, um, you can check out that information. Um, there's some net safety um, tips from Kids Health. Um, we talked a lot about safety planning and stuff like that. The hotline.org has a interactive um, private safety planning feature. So you can go through and create a safety plan on there and then it emails it to a safe email. Um, and so that way you kind of have that and you can adjust as you go. Um, but it's very, very in-depth. It thinks about things that you wouldn't necessarily think about when it comes to safety planning, um, whether you're in a domestic violence or a sexual assault or any sort of relationship like that. Um, that has a very, very like in-depth thing and it has a tips about safety planning as well. And then we have some more education about um, kid safety and things like that on missingkids.org. Is there anything you wanna add about any of these resources, Detective? Um, you definitely covered them all. And, and, and just to reiterate the uh, missingkids.org and the kidshealth.org are both great resources. On the missingkids.org, which is ran by Nick Mick, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, there are um, parent uh, informational things, and as well as for young teens, young children, young adults, there's an array of different resources on there. I encourage people to uh, go on there and take a look, and uh, thank you for doing this. Of course. Um, do we have any final thoughts about safety planning or cyber safety or anything in general? I'll let you go first, and then I have just a few things that I thought of while we were talking. Um, just in closing, that if you know if it doesn't seem right or something doesn't feel right, um, trust yourself, make that report, make that phone call, stop that communication um, and help us help you. That if you need something, reach out to law enforcement, reach out to the Quigley House um, or any of those resources on there. And uh, I hope everyone stays safe and I appreciate the invite. Of course. Thank you so much for coming. And there was one final thing that I thought about. Um, I know we covered a lot today about um, parents and their children's safety planning, but also a large part of issues that happen online to um, reflect the elderly being taken advantage of by scammers or other people who are looking to um, make money off them because they know that they are 
not necessarily most technology, and that's not speaking for every um, elder. Some elders are very, very tech savvy. They know exactly what's going on. Um, but unfortunately, those people are also targeted. It's children and it's um, elderly people because they know that they could potentially be taken advantage of, whether that's because of their cognitive function or um, somebody with a disability or just that they're children. Um, so same thing goes for that. Definitely don't, if you're an older person and somebody's trying to get money out of you or get you to go to a store and send them a money gram or something, don't do it. Um, make sure that you are also not talking to strangers. Don't add anybody you don't know. And definitely don't send any personal information or um, financial information to anybody over the internet. Um, that was something that I thought about halfway through that. Um, and thank you again so much, um, Detective Ellis, for joining me today, having these um, conversations about cyber safety and stuff. Um, and I definitely appreciate it. Uh, and I will definitely list all those um, resources and stuff in the description of the video as well, because I know you can't click on the links on the actual video. Um, and any other resources that we can think of, we're going to throw on there as well. Uh, make sure you share this video with your friends, family, anybody who you think needs to hear about some of these cyber safety things. Um, and you can always contact us or Clay County Sheriff's Office to help safety plan, um, discuss next steps if you feel like you are being um, taken advantage of, whether that's in person or online. Um, and we can hopefully work together to make your life safer um, all around. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful thank day. You. you as well. Okay.